Hey everybody, welcome back to 3 Acorn Corn Bourbon. I'm pretty excited about today's bite-sized bourbon review. We have a single barrel, barrel proof, from none other than Jack Daniels. Now people who know, know. People who don't know think, Jack Daniels? Don't they just make that whiskey that you mix with Coke? And the answer is, they do make a great mixing whiskey. But they also have some other great picks. So I guess the primary takeaway from this video is, don't sleep on Jack Daniels. So I saw Bourbon Junkies do a blind tasting of all their favorite Jack Daniels and I knew I had to try this one. If you haven't seen the Bourbon Junkie stuff, I recommend you go watch that after this video. Jack Daniels is made by Brown Foreman Distillery, founded in 1870 in Louisville, Kentucky. It's one of the few major spirit companies that's been under family control for 150 years. And Brown Foreman brands include Jack Daniels, Woodford Reserve, and Old Forester. Now I know you guys come to this channel for a little bit of education alongside the bourbon, so we're gonna cover the main question. Is Tennessee whiskey bourbon? And long story short, the answer is eh, kinda, yeah. The Federal Standards of Identity for Distilled Spirits defines bourbon as it has to be produced in the United States and its territories, including Puerto Rico and Washington, D.C. It must be made from a grain mixture, at least 51% corn. It must be made in new charred oak containers. It's usually a barrel. It must be distilled to no more than 160 proof. That's 80% alcohol entered into a container for aging at no more than 125 proof, and then bottled at 80 proof or more. Now the definition of bourbon has no set minimum required time for aging. I mean, you can find products aged for three months and sold as bourbon. Now the exception to that is any whiskey that uses the phrase straight bourbon. You get the idea. Now one interesting thing I learned, any bourbon using the phrase straight whiskey and aged less than four years must provide how long it was aged on the label. So in a previous video, when we covered benchmark foolproof, I said we couldn't know how long it was aged and that it was a minimum of two years because it used the phrase straight whiskey. However, it uses the phrase straight whiskey and nowhere on the bottle does it have any sort of aging statement, which means it must be aged at least four years. The more you know. Okay, so Tennessee whiskey. This is gonna be straight whiskey produced in the US state of Tennessee. And although Tennessee whiskey has been defined as bourbon in some international trade agreements, the actual producers of Tennessee whiskey tend to disavow anyone calling their product bourbon. And you won't see any Tennessee distilleries defining their product as bourbon on their bottles or in their advertising material. It seems like they kind of pride themselves on being something distinct from bourbon. So taking the perceived marketing value out of the equation, Tennessee whiskey and bourbon have almost identical requirements, and just about every Tennessee whiskey you can find meets the requirements to be defined as a bourbon. So then the key distinction between bourbon and Tennessee whiskey is the Lincoln County process. The Lincoln County process is a specific charcoal filtering technique used in the production of Tennessee whiskeys. Whiskeys including Jack Daniels. It involves dripping the newly distilled whiskey through sugar maple charcoal before putting it into barrels for aging. So this process is said to mellow the whiskey and add a subtle sweetness. And that's really it. It's the Lincoln County process is the only real distinction between Tennessee whiskeys and traditional bourbons. So is Jack Daniels bourbon? Technically, yes. Jack Daniels would say no. I don't know, who cares? But it is interesting. The Jack Daniels distillery is located in Lynchburg, a small town in Tennessee. Despite its global recognition, Lynchburg is a dry county, meaning the sale of alcohol is restricted. However, the distillery itself is authorized to sell commemorative bottles, give out samples, and all that kind of stuff. The water used in the distillation process comes from a natural limestone cave spring located on distillery grounds. The water is iron-free, which is considered crucial for producing Jack Daniels whiskey. So Jack Daniels barrel proof is bottled anywhere from 125 proof to 140 proof. You can see this bottle is at 130.3 proof. That's 65.15% alcohol by volume. Now Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof is bottled at natural cask strength. And that's gonna result in a higher alcohol content that showcases the whiskey in a pure, unadulterated form. A single barrel barrel proof is uncut and unfiltered, meaning it's bottled directly from the barrel without dilution or filtration. That means this whiskey should have a full flavor intensity and some natural characteristics. Now every bottle of Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof is drawn from, you guessed it, a single barrel. And that single barrel is selected by the master distiller. So that can mean different bottles from different years, or different bottles from the same year, can have unique and distinct flavor profiles. And I think that adds a little excitement and uniqueness to each bottle. But I think it also can be frustrating if I open this bottle and think it's the greatest whiskey I've ever had, it might be really hard to replicate. 
And unlike some other top tier Jack Daniels expressions, the single barrel barrel proof whiskey doesn't have any aging statement on it. That's because for this expression, it's not about the age, it's about the barrel. That a master distiller tastes it and says when it's ready. So was this barrel actually ready for bottling? Or was the master distiller wrong? Let's find out. What a gorgeous color. Really excited about this one. And we're starting with the nose. Wow. That's excellent. I mean, it's intense. It's that brown sugar and caramel. And you've got that classic Jack Daniels banana. Vanilla and toasted oak. It's almost like a banana's foster. It's also got some nice dark fruit and cherry and some fig. I can't wait anymore. We gotta get into this one. That is so good. It is big, it is bold, it is sweet. It's like a, like a rich molasses, banana, toffee. You get oak, charred oak, chocolate. And that's like a little bit of espresso kind of coffee on the back end. I mean, that is a rich and satisfying tasting experience. It's really something special. And the finish is long lasting and powerful. It's still warm, it's still tingly with that high proof. There's loads of that charred oak, a little bit of spice, but there's more sweetness in this finish than a lot of other whiskeys I've tried. Usually that sweetness fades pretty quick, but I'm still getting maple syrup. And then there's a great harmonious blending with the spices, lots of good cinnamon. The finish provides a lasting impression of the whiskey's complexity and its intense flavor profile. I'm extremely satisfied with this. The bourbon junkies did not disappoint. That's it for today's Bite Size Bourbon Review. And remember everyone, Whiskey was made for sharing. Open your bottles, make some memories, and I'll catch you in the next one.